On December 22, 2018, the coastline regions of Banten and Lampong was devastated by three meter tsunami that was triggered by an underwater slide following the volcanic eruption of Anak Krakatau in Indonesia. What caused the tsunami? After analyzing the data from seismographs, satellite imagery, and interferometer, the Indonesian officials have confirmed that the eruption of the Anak Krakatau caused this tsunami in Indonesia. On April 1, 2014, at Chile, a mighty 8.2 magnitude earthquake struck off the coast of northern Chile, triggering small landslides, cutting power, and generating a tsunami. On February 6, 2013, at Lata Solomon Island, a powerful 8.0 magnitude earthquake hit off the coast of Pacific Ocean Solomon Island Archipelago, triggering a local tsunami that traveled for about a thousand miles before losing its energy. On October 25, 2010, at Sumatra, Indonesia, a 7.2 earthquake off the coast of the island of Sumatra, Indonesia unleashed a regional tsunami that killed at least 509 people while another 21 went missing. Tsunamis are one of the most destructive events that can be triggered by Mother Nature. Tsunami wave trains can move as fast as an airplane in high seas. These extremely powerful tidal waves are capable of crashing everything found in their paths. The deadliest tsunamis have formed in response to powerful sea quakes, underwater explosions, and volcanic eruptions. Hello guys! Hello my dear students! Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Tim May. Siyempre, ang kasama mo sa iyong science journey. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science Aid. In this lesson vlog, we're going to discuss about how earthquake waves provide information about the interior of the Earth. And the coverage also of this vlog is all about the main types of seismic waves. So what are the two classifications of seismic waves and what are those subtopic of those seismic waves? So samahan niyo ako hanggang dulo. In our previous lesson vlog, we discussed about uh, the origin of the earthquake. So, at pinag-aralan din natin kung saan ba nagsisimula ang earthquake. At nalaman nyo na rin ang tungkol sa mga fault, sa mga fault line, at sa epicenter at sa focus. Okay, so alam nyo kasi na yung fault, hindi lang naman niya nakikita sa ibabaw ng lupa. Pwede rin yung matagpuan sa mga ilalim ng bodies of water. At kapag nagkaroon ng paggalaw dun sa fault na nasa ilalim ng dagat, dito nagkakaroon ng sudden movement at nagkakaroon din ng earthquake at ang nagiging cause nito is tsunami. Ano ba pag sinabi nating tsunami? A sudden push from the underwater fall can produce a wave that called tsunami. Kung para sa wave na nabuo lang sa wind, syempre mas powerful itong tinatawag natin na tsunami. Although wave din siya, pero yung wind kasi, yan ay tinatawag lang natin sea surface waves. But this tsunami, it involves the depth of the sea, which is anong, saan to nanggagaling? From the sea floor to the surface. Kaya sobrang powerful ng tsunami at maaari itong magdulot ng destruction at, at maaari din itong magdulot ng kamatayan sa maraming tao. Pag nakakita kayo ng tsunami, kapag nasa malayo pa lang yan, medyo parang tingin nyo mababa lang siya na isang metro lang ang, ang taas niyan. Pero, sobrang bilis niya na pwede natin siyang ikumpara sa speed ng jet plane. But, when this tsunami reaches the shore, it slows down, but it grows in height. Okay, so paano nga ba naging related ang earthquake sa tsunami? Okay, sabi nga natin kanina, ang fault, hindi lang siya sa land. Okay, sa land, kapag may fault at nagkaroon ng sudden movement doon sa fault na yun, makaka-experience tayo ng earthquake dito sa land, which is maguguha ng mga building at ang mga paligid natin ay parang uh, gumagalaw. Pero, ang fault, hindi lang yan nasa ibabaw ng lupa, pero meron din yan sa ilalim ng dagat. At kapag nga nagkaroon ng earthquake dito sa ilalim ng dagat at naibo itong mga fault na ito, doon nagkakaroon ng tsunami. Kaya naman, kung ikaw ay nakatera, 
sa lugar na malapit sa dagat at bigla mong naramdaman na parang nagkaroon ng lindol, ito ay isang warning signal na lumikas ka na dahil maaari na mag-trigger ito at magkaroon ng tsunami. So kung may sasakyan ka, lumikas na kayo at pumunta na kayo sa malayo sa dagat, or kung meron ng, at kung wala naman kayo mapupuntahan pero mataas naman yung lugar nyo, pumunta na kayo sa pinakamataas na lugar kung saan meron dyan sa inyo. But remember that not every fault movement beneath the sea will produce tsunami. Paano at kailan lang? If the movement of the fault is horizontal or sideways direction, so walang tsunami na mangyayari. Only if the fault movement is vertical, sakalang nagkakaroon ng tsunami. Okay, in this lesson, we're going to discuss about the different types of seismic waves. What are the two main types of seismic waves? The shifting rock in an earthquake causes vibrations and that is what you call the seismic waves that travels within the earth or along its surface. May tinatawag tayong seismograph. So ito yung ginagamit ng mga scientists para i-record nila yung data tungkol dito sa seismic waves. And this information yields information not only about the earthquake's behavior but also about the structure of the earth itself. There are two main types of seismic waves. We have the body waves and we also have the surface waves. So ano ba ang pagkakaiba ng body waves at ng surface waves? Pag sinabi natin body waves, it travels along the body of the earth. At meron tayong two types ng body wave. We have the S wave and the P wave. So ano naman ang pinagkaiba ng P wave and S wave? The P wave, tinatawag din natin siya na primary waves. At ang S wave naman, this is what we call the secondary wave. So pag-usapan muna natin, ano ba pag sinabi natin P wave? Okay, sa P waves, P waves cause the ground to compress and expand and that is back and forth in the direction of travel. So, ang direction ng travel niyan is moving from back and forth. Ano pa? Ganun-ganun lang siya kasi nga compression at saka pwede siyang mag-expand. And, tinawag tong primary waves or P waves, it is, it is because these P waves is the first type of wave that arrive in the seismic recording station. At tandaan nyo na kapag P wave, pwede siyang mag-travel from solid, liquid, and even in gases. So, sa lahat ng phase of matter, pwede itong P waves. And, pag sinabi naman natin na S waves are the secondary waves, S wave shake the ground in shearing or crosswise in motion which is perpendicular to the direction of travel. So, paano naman nag gumagalaw itong S wave? So, they are moving side by side or up and down. Okay, so, kabalik tara naman siya ng P wave. Okay, so bakit siya tinawag na S-wave or the secondary wave? That is because this S-wave or the secondary wave is uh, the second type of wave that arrives and recorded in the seismic recording station. So, pangalawa siya dun sa P-wave. Okay, so unlike the uh, P-wave, which is kaya niyang mag-travel sa solid, liquid, and gas, dito naman hindi. Because unlike the P-wave, the S-waves can only travel through solid material. So, sa solid lang. Hindi niya kaya mag-travel sa liquid or sa gas. After both P and S-wave have moved in the body of the Earth, they are followed by the surface wave, which travels along the surface of the Earth. Surface waves travels only through solid media. Yung paggalaw ng surface wave, mas mabagal yan kesa dun sa body waves. Pero tandaan nyo na sa surface waves, they are much larger and much destructive than the body waves. Kung sa body waves, meron tayong P wave at S wave. So dito naman sa surface wave, meron din itong two subtypes. And these are the love wave and also the Rayleigh wave. Love waves have horizontal motion that moves the surface from side to side perpendicular to the direction the wave is traveling. So between these two surface waves, between the love wave and the Rayleigh wave, mas mabilis gumalaw itong tinatawag natin na love wave. Rayleigh waves cause the ground to shake in elliptical pattern. So para naman itong kagaya ng mga nakikita na natin na ocean waves, which is yung paganyan, ano? Okay? Sa lahat ng seismic waves, so itong Rayleigh waves na tinatawag natin, ito yung mas malaki yung kalat. Ano, they spread out. Ano, they spread out the most. And then giving them the long duration to seismographic recordings. 
Body waves refer to the vibrations that travel through the interior of the Earth. The two types of body waves are primary waves or the P waves and secondary waves or S waves. P waves push rocks in the direction they are traveling and they travel in all states of matter, while S waves displace rocks at right angles to the direction they are traveling. S waves cannot pass through liquids. Surface waves refer to the vibrations that travel at the surface of the earth. They can also travel at the surface of the mantle and core. The two types of surface waves are the Rayleigh waves and the love waves. Surface waves cause the damage incurred during an earthquake. Seismic waves provide information about the interior of the earth. P waves travel through solids and liquids, but they travel faster through solids. Changes in the speed of earthquake vibrations give scientists an idea of the physical properties of various depths of the Earth's interior. Okay, let us refer to this diagram. So, ito yung kinatawag natin na lithosphere. So, makikita natin yung lithosphere dito sa part na to. At pag sinabi natin lithosphere, so this is the solid and outer part of the Earth. And ang lithosphere, it composed of the crust, okay, so yung nasa pinakataas, and the uppermost part of the mantle. Okay, and kung makikita nyo, yung upper part ng mantle is solid. Ano? Okay, so yung seismic waves, nagka-travel siya ng napakabilis because of this rock sphere. Okay, kasi siyempre sobrang solid dyan, kaya mas mabilis yung pag-travel nitong seismic waves. So, below dun sa lithosphere, sa baba ng lithosphere naman, bumabagal ngayon yung, yung galaw ng seismic waves. Okay, bakit? This observation indicates that it is a very high temperature. So, sobrang taas ng temperature nito na yung, yung mga rocks dito sa part nito ay nagme-meltdown na. So, natutunaw nagiging liquid. Kaya, mas mabagal ngayon yung paggalaw ng seismic waves. Okay? So, due to very high temperature that melts rocks, making the molten behave like a fluid. Okay? So, itong part na to, ang tawag dito ng mga scientists, okay, they call this region as the mantle asthenosphere. Okay? So, this is the asthenosphere. Okay, below asthenosphere, seismic waves travel fast again. Okay? So, below, sa mamang part na yan, bumibilis ulit yung paggalaw ng seismic waves, indicating that the lower part, that the lower part of the mantle is solid. Pero yung lower part ng asthenosphere, which is ito, so medyo bumibilis na ulit dyan. Okay, bakit daw? So, it is probably because there is a high pressure. So, yung high pressure, ito yung nagiging dahilan kung bakit nananatiling solid itong part na to kahit na sobrang taas ng temperature niya. So, it is a similar phenomenon observed in the core. Okay, doon naman sa next layer ng Earth which is the core. Seismic waves slowly, slowly travel through the outer core indicating that it is molten due to the extremely high temperature. So, kung makikita nyo dito, liquid na itong part na to. So, kaya bumabagal na ulit yung seismic waves. Now, seismic waves, then again, the inner core is solid. Ayan, kung makikita nyo yung inner core, yung inner core, itong kulay dilaw, okay, solid, ng part, solid na yung part na yan. Bakit ulit? Okay, although sobrang taas ng temperature sa part na to, pero nananatili siyang solid kasi sobrang taas din ng pressure niya. So, most probably, the very high pressure in the deepest part of the earth keeps it solid. This is the end of our discussion. Thank you for listening. Sana may natutunan kayo sa ating topic about the different types of seismic waves. So, in our next discussion, sa so part 2 ng ating module 3 and 4, so sa next lesson, walang natin, didiscuss naman natin ang iba't ibang activities about the seismic waves. So, uh, panoorin niyo sana yung ating gagawing activity at demonstrate natin uh, ang tungkol pa rin dito, syempre, sa topic about seismic waves. So, sabahan nyo pa rin ako hanggang sa ating kasunod na vlog para mas lalo pa natin maintindihan ang topic natin tungkol dito sa seismic waves and all about the Earth. 
This is me again, Teacher Tine. If you are new to this channel, do not forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science 8. So hanggang dito na lang and see you on my next vlog. Bye! Mag-subscribe ka muna!